Welcome back, YouTube. It's your boy, The Crow Show, home of the smoothest voice on Twitch. In today's video, we're going to analyze, I think, two games of me not playing so great as Slinger. In the previous game, I did commentary where I played kind of optimal and had a relatively good round with Slinger. These games, though, I really struggled, and I thought it might be interesting to break it down and analyze some of the mistakes I made and if you have any feedback, I'd love to hear it. So the first chase, we run into Ace here. And right there, he got so much distance, we know two things. For sure, this man is running Lithe. And secondly, it's very likely he's running Windows of Opportunity. It's a very common perk combo. So my goal here is just to keep him zoned into this corner. So I can land a hit, maybe even down him, get some pressure. So that's why I break the pallet on that side. Land a hit on ace there. And I'm very close to reaching my goal. So he jumped into the locker. And what does that tell me? And a generator just popped. <laughs> that tells me he knows to jump into the locker to try to waste time. Maybe even avoid jolt value, which I do have jolt. So that generator popped relatively quick. So there was probably two people on that gen at least. I opt to go for pain resonance hook. Away goes one stack. I don't know if that was a mistake or not. I went over here to check on this generator that Ace barely touched and I could see that it wasn't hit with pain res. So then I patrolled over to the main building and I could see that there were some scratch marks there. And I start my patrol, Ace is still on hook, and I'm kind of proxying here uh, in an attempt to uh, apply more pressure. So I follow this person up here. Land a hit uh, on the Michaela. I wanted to get her before she had a chance to drop the pallet. Uh, she didn't drop the god pallet there. I was really hoping she would. It would be nice to get that out of the way early. She dropped it there. And so my goal here was to break both of these doors. Uh, to and, and you see her zooming by there? I missed it in game. But it's very likely that she has life with all of the distance she got. Land another hit, exact same spot on the Michaela. I hear Ace scream over there with Jolt, so I know that they're working on that generator over there. Second generator pops, and I go for a pain resonance hook, and it pops, and so I know uh, relatively where they're working on gens. I get hit with a head on stun, so that tells me that these two probably on comms and they actually did bring the Ormond map offering. So I know that they have these coordinated plays and I'm a little annoyed, but it's not the end of the world for me. But Ormond is going to be really tough as Slinger because it's a relatively big map and Slinger's very slow. Applying map pressure is really difficult with Slinger. So I decide to again proxy this hook because I know those two are over in that corner, not working on generators. And of course a person's on hook. And maybe I messed up there. I've got a choice to make here. Do I continue to tunnel the person who just got off hook? Or do I go after the person who's next to me who's injured and on comms with their friend? And they might both have head-on. They might have the head-on combo. What would you do in this situation? I decide to go for the Michaela who is already injured. And I made a very big mistake there. I missed the shot. That was a very easy shot. And I didn't even see the Talita there. And again, her friend is right there, the Jake Park. So there's three people not working on generators. And the Jake and the Talita, they both have quick and quiet. And so I down the Talita here. And I know there's a pain res hook. There's one person out there probably working on gens. So I go for the pain res hook. All right, so I run into Jake and land a pretty quick and easy shot there. Uh, get him injured. The third generator pops. And I'm having a really tough go. And you can see Michaela is actually down. 
and she was using the Nick Cage perk, so she gets back up and she's at full health. Darn. <laughs> Maybe I should have stayed on Michaela. Who knows? So again, I continue to proxy camp, and this is probably where I make a big mistake. Maybe I should have been patrolling Jens. Maybe I should have chased Jake and continued to pressure Jake. I think I probably just got tilted. So I land a shot on Jake while I'm proxy camping. And can you tell me why this is a mistake here? I'll give you just a couple of seconds to, to realize why this is a mistake. If my goal is to proxy camp that person until they get to second stage, I've put a handcuff on my own actions by shooting Jake. I can't down him really quickly here and then continue to pressure that hook. So I land the shot on Jake. He's on my harpoon gun and there's somebody getting into position for the hook save. And that's exactly what happens here. So yeah, sure, I down Jake, but it probably would have been best for me to maybe stick to the proxy camp, maybe stick to my guns. And if you can see there, that generator has been hit multiple times. So it's getting very close to where I can no longer break it either by kicking it or hitting it with pain resonance or jolt. So I do a quick patrol and I can see them going for the hook save and I take a shot and I'm actually quite surprised that I missed there. So I'm chasing, I'm chasing. Now do I go for the healthy person or the person who's injured? And I go for the Jake. There's another really big mistake. I missed the shot. I was very impatient. I felt maybe a little bit pressured. And so this Jake uh, actually did a pretty good job of wasting my time. I think maybe taking this chase was not the best idea. And this here is another big mistake. I should have realized that Jake wasn't making any noise while I was chasing him. So I hit him and he had off the record, he had endurance. I do down him relatively quickly after I hit him with off the record. This here wasn't a mistake. I was checking the lockers for a cheeky head-on save from the Talita since they were on comms and stuff. So I put Jake on hook. I'm out of pain resonance hooks. I'm, I'm one gen down. Uh, away from losing. I miss a shot here. At this point, I'm pretty tilted. <laughs> They're all at full health. I figure there's at least two or three here. And here, I think maybe I stay in this corner for too long, uh, land a hit on ace. I, I should be pressuring the generators, and I think that's really where I went wrong in this trial. Too much proxy camping and not enough patrolling the generators. Also, I was so tilted, I didn't even see that person go into the locker. I ran straight by, and they had a free escape there. <laughs> now, I didn't get hit with head-on, and he potentially could have hit me with head-on, but you can play a little mind game at the locker to avoid the head-on stun. But this one, I, I also think I, I can blame Ormond a little bit because it's so big and spread out. They did a fantastic job of fixing the generators and uh, spreading the pressure, making sure they don't get stuck in a bad 3-gen. In this spot, I really just wanted to get Ace injured so that he'd have to go mend and they would have to waste a little bit of extra time with healing. So again, I'm kind of proxy camping, just hoping for a 1k. I know this isn't super ideal, so I get my one kill, three of them escape. Uh, lots of mistakes in that trial. And I think the biggest mistake was proxy camping too much and not enough gen patrolling. Also a lack of aura reading perks. I think if I maybe gave up monitor and abuse and put in something like nowhere to hide or even barbecue and chili, that would definitely help with finding out where the survivors are and where they're working on generators. Uh, chasing the Jake Park when he had off the record, he wasn't making any noise. That caused me a lot of issues. And also chasing the ace at Killer Shack where there was already a generator that had been fixed already. And at the end, when he got off hook, I probably could have reeled him in and whacked him and downed him. And that would have put a bit of pressure. And I maybe could have pulled off a 2K, which is you know a draw in DVD. But those are some of the mistakes I made 
If I missed any, please let me know. Let's move on to the next round. So I think what we're going to see here, especially at the beginning of the trial, is that I'm really struggling without aura reading perks like Lethal Pursuer, Barbecue and Chili, Nowhere to Hide, stuff like that. So I'm thinking I probably have to remove Sloppy Butcher from this build, maybe even Jolt, because in this trial, I just didn't get Jolt value at all. Now, I sped things up by about 200% to begin with, just to, just to show the beginning of the trial and how long it took for me to find my first survivor. So it's a Fung Min and relatively straightforward chase, land a hit on her. And here I might have been able to land that hit, but I know that if I miss the shot, it's going to cost me quite a bit. So I opt to close the distance a little bit. I think that somebody was on that generator. I think if you listen closely, you can hear somebody, but they barely tapped it. So right here, I'm, I'm looking around, and this is why uh, rat gameplay is so popular these days. Homie's just pre-running. I struggle to find people here. And I think if I had nowhere to hide, and maybe even a combo like Pop Goes the Weasel, that would help out quite a bit. Because I did land, uh, I did down the Fung pretty quickly. And look at who I ran into next. It's the Fung Min. Again, I have no aura reading perks, so it's not like I was looking for her. She just happened to be the person I ran into. I go for the shot through the window there. And I'm able to down her in the corner. I look around, no jolt value. I hear a loud notification over there. Having a look around, I go to this middle generator and rather than chase that person, I opt to stay close to the fung because I, I figure if I can maybe get her out early, That'll help out my cause. I take the estimated guess that Gabriel is the only one over in this corner going for the hook save. So that's why I kept him on my harpoon for as long as I could. Sable's over here, she takes a hit and Gabriel actually gets the hook save. Now right there, I run straight past the Fung and I'm thinking to myself, I'll just go for Gabriel because maybe I can down him pretty quickly there. That's probably a mistake. I probably should have taken Fung out there. I think that was actually the last time I saw her this trial. She hid like you should when you're on death hook, and there's only one generator fixed at the time. So I eventually do down this Gabriel, but he did waste quite a bit of time. He actually did a pretty good job on that run. And I go for the pain resonance hook, and the, I think that was Zarina goes for the Sabo, and that was a really big play that actually killed a lot of momentum for me. So I go for this arena and I have a decision to make. Do I just injure her and go back to Gabriel or do I continue the chase? So I continue the chase on Zarina. She seems like a pretty good runner, pretty capable. She doesn't have a lot to work with out here though. I put her on a pain resonance hook and you notice the counter didn't go down. I think that's because they didn't have any progress on any of the generators. They weren't fixing any at the time. So we can actually hear Zarina. We can hear her whimpers and her, she's in pain and stuff. That means she doesn't have off the record. But I don't wait out the dead hard. She hits me with dead hard and that was a big mistake on my part. So I break the pallet and I can continue the chase with Zarina and I get her down. And again, no jolt value. I'm getting the idea here, and as I'm watching this stuff, I'm chasing people where there's no generators. Get hit with Blast Mine, kick it again, land a hit on Gabriel. Hey, that's pretty cool. Maybe we can get him down pretty quick. Land a hit on Gabriel, and again, this guy was a very good runner. He knew how to use his resources. He's really good at mind games, and dodge that harpoon shot. I had to break the pallet there. Uh, one generator left. I down him, and they've got a really good three gen situation. Doesn't matter, <laughs> all the gens are fixed. So in this spot, I think I really messed up by not tunneling out the Fung in the beginning, and I also really messed up versus Zarina when I ate her dead hard, and uh, the late chase with Gabriel didn't help. There were no generators in the area. 
And this is the second game in a row where I just wasn't patrolling generators the way I should have. Missed a couple of key shots and didn't really stick to my game plan of proxying and tunneling, which is not something I go into the trial thinking, but because I down Fung twice in a row in, in early in game, I thought, oh, maybe I should just take her out early. I didn't fully commit to that when I should have. Now, what did we learn from this trial? In these two trials, actually, I think I do need to add aura reading. I'm thinking of swapping in Nowhere to Hide and possibly Barbecue and Chili as well, or Nowhere to Hide with Pop Goes the Weasel and get rid of Sloppy Butcher and Jolt, because a lot of these maps are really spread out. I just didn't get a lot of Jolt value in both rounds, and that really hurt. It was kind of a wasted perk slot when I could have used information and maybe even a bit of more gen slowdown in the form of Pop Goes the Weasel. So at this point, um, it's a three out. It's a very disheartening round, uh, but I hope you can learn from my mistakes. Proxy camping, tunneling, it can be effective, but only under the right circumstances. I made poor choices in these trials, trying to proxy and tunnel. Don't do what I did be a better slinger. Thanks for watching, and I hope to catch you in the next one.